All right. We should be live now. I didn't want to have to do this, but um, some people kind of screwed with me, and I'm not happy about it. So we are going to expose this company called Rico Management. Rico Management is actually a company called Kill Links, K-I-L-L-L-Y-N-X, LLC in Florida. But as you'll soon see, there's a lot more to this company than meets the eye. Before I go too far into this, I do want to say, do not harass these people. Just don't do it. The point of this video is for you to understand this company, how legitimate they may be, who they really are, and how you could potentially deal with them if you're facing a copyright takedown on YouTube from them. Do not harass them. I also wanted to show what I'm going through so you can understand it. That is the most important thing, though. This is informational. Do not abuse it. Second, YouTube in particular, this information is publicly available. All of it was found publicly. I will be showing you public information. None of this is private. So if some wacko decides that they're going to file some kind of privacy complaint with YouTube, well, the information is public, and I will repost it if it gets taken down with an addendum saying that you did so. So if Kill Links or Rico or whoever, if you are watching this right now, please be aware that I will make sure this video stays up and you will not get it taken down as you have no rights to enforce over it. I'm telling people not to harass you. The least you can do is not screw with me any further. Now, that being said, let's do some digging. So check this out. You see this, of course. This is YouTube Studio. A copyright strike. A copyright owner has asked us to take down your video. Basically, someone sent YouTube a DMCA takedown, an official legal DMCA takedown notice not the content ID system that most people deal with that just blocks content and prevents monetization and slaps ads on their videos. No, this is actually someone sending a copyright takedown notice as provided for in the Digital Millennium Copyright Act. So, they want me to do copyright school, as if I don't understand copyright, um, and they want me to uh, basically contact them or submit a counter notification if I have a problem with it. I have already contacted the claimant. Um, they use different email addresses for different contacts. I'm not sure why. It seems kind of silly to have copyright followed by a number at ricomanagement.com when you could just pull them all in one place and use a program to sort them out later on. Anywho, let me show you the email I sent. Uh, greetings, I received a copyright strike on one of my videos from your company. My contact information was accessible in the video description, which it is, and I would have gladly removed the video had you contacted me directly. At the time the video was uploaded, the song, which in particular was Tools Enema, A-E-N-I-M-A, -E did not exist in YouTube's content ID system. So you can imagine how unfair it seems for an experimental video from when I first started YouTube that didn't even reach 200 lifetime views and didn't even contain the full song. This is true, it cut off, I think, before the bridge, actually. To go from no copyright issues for years to the extreme case of this strike. I am extending the following offer to resolve the issue. Please retract your copyright complaint from the video. Upon removing your complaint, I will delete the video permanently from YouTube. This is the best way to handle it. If they don't want it up, they can ask me to take it down. They didn't ask me. They sent a DMCA. Impersonal, rude, frankly. But if they're doing it in an automated way and they're dealing with thousands and thousands of people posting videos with that song in it, um, I can kind of sort of understand. We'll give them a good faith assumption that it's just them doing automated crap. Benefit of the doubt, whatever. Don't come out guns a-blazing, it doesn't tend to make people very sympathetic to your cause. Be nice. So I'm basically saying I'll take my video away if they remove the strike that has penalized my channel because this copyright strike that they've filed, that has hurt me. Since I have been harmed by their strike, I'm saying to them, 
if you remove the strike, then I'll just delete the video. Um, what I did not put in this email is that if they don't remove the strike, I'm going to file a counter notification. I'm going to declare fair use. I'm also going to say that I don't think that they are the people who own the rights to the song, which I'll explain in a minute, and therefore that they have no legal standing to send a DMCA takedown in the first place. So I'm dealing with this copyright strike, and I started doing some digging because this kind of thing makes me angry, and I, I tried to find out who these people are. Um, what I found out is that uh, these people have been at this for years. Um, as far as I can tell, it is a legitimate company. At least in that regard, it is a legitimate um, player in the sending copyright takedowns field, if you will. Um, I did some digging and let's see. Let, let's actually go over the ownership first because I have that first in the timeline here. Um, not exactly the order I went in, but okay. So, Wikipedia, Tool, Band. Heh, nice wrench. Specifically, Enema. So, I went down here, found Enema. Not enough information, so I clicked through. Enema, the album. Okay. Label, Zoo. Click through. Zoo Entertainment, record label. Zoo Entertainment is defunct. And it was sold to Volcano Entertainment... And Volcano ended up being sold to Sony in 08. So Volcano is still the nominal holder of this album. And Sony Music, SME, Sony Music Entertainment, is the actual company that should hold the rights since they are the descendant label that Enema was published under. So, SME, huge corporation, should own the rights. I don't know why my nose itches tonight. Jesus Christ. Sorry about that. Um, it's killing me, though. Sony Music Entertainment holds the rights to Enema, most likely. Um, I can't say that for certainty. But the bottom line is Sony owns the rights, as far as I can tell, um, because they bought the labels that owned the rights. So, I did some digging, and the uh, Tool Band subreddit... Some, there are at least two posts about it, but I'll just show you this one. Rico management is copyright striking and taking down two lyric videos, and this is from one year ago. Now, I've seen complaints about this company from like eight or nine years ago, but this is from one year ago, and I scrolled down, and this, Rico management full contact information. I did not click this verification from Facebook thing, but I think I'll go ahead and do it and see what it says. Hopefully there's no gore or something. Uh, hurry up. I don't know what this website is that this guy used, but yeah, Facebook. Sony Music Entered... Oh, crap, I should have clicked it. SME does, in fact, hold the rights. So, yeah. I mean, this still isn't 100% conclusive, but if you have someone with a Facebook copyright release saying, uh, Sony Music Entertainment has accepted your dispute and released their claim. Well, you know what that means? That means Sony probably owns it. I was right. I feel like I should do the razor fist thing, you know. Anyway, I don't I don't really want to get in trouble with YouTube. Oh no. So they um they posted these two pictures. The other one was more interesting to me. My contact information is now this must be clipped from their DMCA. They actually got a DMCA um, document sent to them, I guess, from Facebook. And um YouTube doesn't do that. Ah <sighs> cookie law. The cookie law is stupid. Make the cookie law banner go away. YouTube doesn't do that. I got on YouTube's creator support. I asked them if, if there was a way that I could bring up the original DMCA complaint so I could read it in full and find out who they're claiming to be acting on behalf of. Um, yeah, the bottom line is that they can't do it. YouTube does not have a function where they can give you a copy of the DMCA that was sent to them, um, which is a little bit of a pain. I asked them if they could put a bug in the ear of the devs to make it possible to get that. So anyway, um, this this is interesting. Rico Management, care of Tool Dissectional, which is Tools LLC. Um, notice this address, Van Buren Boulevard. I don't care about Matthew Neely so much, but... 19510 Van Buren Boulevard, S, uh, Suite 3, F3 182, which is weird because suites usually don't have that many numbers and dashes and all that. 
Riverside. There's a phone number. I called this phone number within 10 minutes of getting um, the copyright strike and left them a message. And I did not get an answer, and I left a message. But this phone number, the contact phone number that they're sending out on their DMCA takedowns is actually a Google Voice number. So it's not a real phone number. It's a forwarding number. So you don't get their real phone number. So that was weird. That was very weird to me. <coughs> Why is a professional company dealing with record labels... <coughs> Sorry. Why is a professional company who does these deals with these record labels using a Google Voice number as their contact? Um, I can only guess that they're doing so much bulk slamming of people's videos that they don't want to get bombarded on their real phone number, which they can't change in the event that they get tired of it. Um, anyway, I left them a message. I uh, just said, if you take it down, or if you take the strike away, I'll take the video down. Fair enough. Now... The other thing is I sent something out to Sony on Twitter because if they're doing this without Sony's knowledge, since Sony's the label, Sony technically has the rights. At, at least that's my understanding. I am not in the music industry, although I do know some people that are involved in the music industry. So I don't know for a fact that Sony holds the rights to the song Enema by Tool. Maybe Tool owns the rights. Maybe there's some kind of contract and it expired, and at the expiration of the contract, the rights went back to Tool the Band. I do not know. I'm not privy to that information. But I have to assume that Sony is the rights holder, as far as I know. Now, Tool could be the rights holder if they're, operating, if they're acting on behalf of Tool. Uh, you know, maybe they're in some sort of legal standing to act on their behalf. Uh, personally, I don't think that you should be able to act on their behalf. You know, if they have a problem, they should be dealing with it. But I get it. Um, anyway, that that's not the discussion I want to have here. Um, so I said on Twitter, look, I hate this Twitter account. I deleted everything on it because I, I just have it so that my name is not usable by anyone else. <laughs> Ask, uh, what was it, the, the Padres about that? Yeah, that was pretty funny. Uh, Sony Music, Rico Management, DMCA's... Are they operating on your behalf? Are they falsely claiming rights to your catalog? How can I contact your legal team? Probably never going to hear back. But it's out there. Whatever. Um, now, here's the, where it gets fun. You remember that address? 19510 Van Buren Boulevard? It is so hard to say that. Um, I looked it up on Google on Street View. I was curious because the number is really weird. Guess what came up? This. That's right. Postal Annex. Sweet F3 is Postal Annex, which means the 182 after the F3 is a private mailbox number. From what I read, it's possible that, that forming the address in this way is a violation of U.S. Postal Service regulations that regulate private mailboxes. So they could be violating that law by making their address that way. I don't know. But anyway... The point is that this Rico management company, they have a Google Voice phone number, so they're not publishing their real phone number, and their mailing address on their DMCA takedowns goes to a private mailbox rental facility. So you don't get a real address either. So this made me instantly suspicious because... These people clearly are hiding who they are. That it is obvious that they are trying to keep you from being able to find out who they really are, where they really are, what they're really up to, and so on. So I did some digging to see if I could find out what was really going on behind the scenes of this management company thing, this this rights takedown, blah, blah, blah. So punching up the address with the sweet number pulled up two results on DuckDuckGo. I use that because Google sucks. I don't like Google. And I got two results. One of them was uh, this thing here, and the other one was this thing here. <clears throat> I'm going to go ahead and pull this up to the forefront. This, <laughs> funny that it's in Russian, um, or Cyrillic, I don't know that it's Russian, but this is... Apparently, a fairly recent uh, 9 5 2020 
I don't know if the order is that it's May 5th, May 9th, or if it's September 5th, 2020. But this is um, an abuse complaint to someone's service provider. Start of the technical details. Here's the DMCA takedown. This is a pretty standard DMCA takedown notice. Um, for stuff that's published on the internet. Um, IFC films the other lamb. Now, here's where it's fun for me, is that this guy who posted this notice also posted these Google Drive links here. And, and that was helpful, but I'll show you those a little later. Let's go over some other stuff before I show you that stuff. Um, I think it's best to save that until later. Uh, the following materials are infringing... Um, let's see. I mean, there's really not much to say about this. It's just a standard form. So, you've seen that. Um, I don't really care about it, so I'm going to kill it. Um, now, this is where it gets fun. See, this kill links thing here you're probably wondering how I got there well I got there because when I punched up why is this website so slow it's ridiculous when I punched up the address I didn't get that's actually what that is I didn't get um, the, the address with the sweet number I did I did not get the, uh, what do you call it, what do you call it, Rico Management, I got this thing, this is what came up on that page, not Rico Management, so, uh-oh, they made a little bit of an error, so they say that this is their physical location in California, but you notice there's, there's two addresses here, one of them's the same one, but this other one's in Florida, it's a Florida li limited liability company, but they registered their physical address as being in Riverside, California, uh, and you see there's some names here, Jeffrey Morera, Morera, Morera and William Herring are the registered agents, I suppose. Um, and you see that uh, Jeffrey's address is that private mailbox, the same private mailbox, well, at least the, uh, yeah, presumably it's the same address and PMB. And the other guy, I don't know where Pachapa Hill is, it's probably his house, so we're not going to mess with that. Uh, you shouldn't, shouldn't mess with the people. Um, I was also curious as to what this address is, this Northwest 67th Avenue. I did look that up, and um, I pulled it up on Google Street View. I'm fairly certain that that's a dead end. It looks like it's apartments. Um, and j just to prove that, um, I punched up... Yeah, I know. Um, I punched up this Zillow thing, and 17970 Northwest 68th Avenue. I mean, look at them. They're apartments. All right, what else? Let's see. Yeah, see, there's just there's nothing there. Whoop, you're not supposed to see that yet. Um, so let's go ahead and close some of this. Let me show you the rest of this. So I pulled up the details for their entry, and... Um, there's that 17970 again. There's a whole bunch of stuff there. See, this is what I'm saying. I'm pretty sure they're apartments and that these are just, you know, you see there's some there's some people that run some businesses that are registered at their apartments, whatever. So Kill Links LLC, eh, we've already seen all this. All right, this is where things get interesting. Um, let's pull this. This is Corporation Wiki, Kill Links LLC, Overview, Florida LLC, Tuesday, January 3rd, 2012. So yeah, they're about nine years old. Who owns it? Well, you'll see there's Eric Martinez, William Herring, Jeffrey Moreira, and Adam M. Shaw. And those are apparently, those are, are presumably the officers of the company. Now you'll notice that two of them have other companies they're attached to, which I have not explored because, like I said, I don't really care about these other people, their other associations right now, as long as it's not related to this Kill Links thing. There are a few known addresses here. I haven't really looked into most of these. Interesting, it actually was located at that apartment at one point. That's why it came up there. Uh, but 
yeah, the point is that all these addresses have been associated with that company, probably through their official filings. Let's see, Florida Department of State, California Secretary of State. I mean, this is pretty straightforward stuff. All this information is public record. It's available through the secretaries of states of the respective states. Eric, Adam, William, and Jeffrey. These guys own it. Now, the Jeffrey and William guys seem to be the big bosses. Y you can see that here, actually. Um, William and Jeffrey seem to be the, the head honchos. Um, although it says Adam M. Shaw is the president. But I did find that some of the information here is not necessarily completely correct because I actually went and dug it up. So, over here... Uh, you know what? Let's do this first. Um, yeah, yeah. Over here, I pulled up... Let's go ahead and close some more of this junk. You, you already know this is a postal annex and that I wind on Twitter. You don't need this. So, California, Secretary of State. California, Secretary of State, I searched for RICO management. And I only found one company called RICO management. And you see agent for service of processes, Jose Vasquez. This RICO management is not... RICO management. In fact, there's a distinct possibility that RICO management does not exist in California, that it's not a California company at all. Um, so look at this. Search.sunbiz.org is the Florida Division of Corporations. Now this is where it gets fun. Look at this. Detail by entity name, Florida Limited Liability Company, Kill Links LLC. And you can find all kinds of fun stuff in here. Jeffrey Morera, 2045 Biscayne Boulevard. And you can, if you really want to look at their filings and see things like when they've changed this, that, or the other, who the officers are, you can. It's a waste of your time. It's just a waste. Don't bother. The point is, Kill Links is in Florida. And now that I'm thinking about it, I wonder... We're getting an unknown territory here, but let's see. Rico Management. Ah, gee, I wonder what the address is for that. Oh, that's Michigan? Michigan. Richard Combs. This is not the same Rico Management. I am, I am fairly, although it was registered in 2012. It was registered in 2012. That is, it is suspicious that it was registered in the same year. Huh. But I do not think that the that RICO management actually exists. I don't think it's a real corporate entity anywhere. <clears throat> Which is kind of funny if they're not a real corporate entity. Also, I did a WHOIS search on their domain, private. You know, most domains are privately registered now. So, but let's just... Um, we know who they are. They're Kill Links LLC. They're not RICO management. The RICO management name is a lie. It is a front. And interestingly enough... Uh, I don't think you can partner with a non-existent company. Uh, they don't exist in Florida as a company, and they don't exist in California as a company, at least not that I have seen. So it's entirely possible that they are not able to legally send DMCAs because they're not a real company, RICO Management, that is. Um, now, why does that matter? Well, because that's the name on the documents. Remember those links from earlier, the Google Drive links from earlier? Yeah, here they are. So there's two documents here. They're publicly available. You know, they're, um, there's no password or anything. They're publicly accessible documents. Um, RICO Management. And there's the California and the phone number again. Agent Information, Ariel Mendez. Now, I've not seen that, that name before, but whatever. Someone in California is picking up the mail. Ariel Mendez, copyright agent. Now, how old is this? This has no date. This is nothing but a certification. It's unnecessary certification saying that I think the notice is accurate and I'm allowed to represent these people. Now, here, this DocuSign envelope ID thing. First of all, little sidebar, DocuSign and other electronic signatures are BS because the truth of the matter is that any idiot can make up a number to put at the top of this document. You know, that's just a GUID. Anybody can make up a GUID. Anybody can scribble down a signature, draw a little docu-signed-by thingy here around it, 
Anybody can do that and make it look legitimate. So electronic signatures, I, I don't have any faith in them. People rely on them, but I think that they're BS. Anyway, that's neither here nor there. That's just something that's always irked me. So to whom it may concern, I, we, IFC Films, are the owner of the film. We have contracted with Rico Management to perform services on their behalf. Uh, by way of this contract, we authorize them. They're authorizing Rico Management to enforce their copyright. Basically, to file DMCA takedowns on their behalf. Now, um, the last thing I'm going to show you on the actual websites is this. You, uh, you saw that address that was actually in Miami. This is the building that they're in. I think it's Suite 270-something. This is the actual building that they're in, supposedly. They're definitely not in that building. This is the building they're in, and that's it. It's, an, it's, it's just your standard office-y building in a big city. Nothing special about it. So that covers that. Now, um, to end this, because these people are kind of shady in their practices, um, I did a little bit more searching. I found nothing of note on Facebook. Um, and I use an old Waterfox classic, so I can't actually pull up LinkedIn on it. But I did find some stuff on LinkedIn, which I will share with you. You may recognize one of the people. I don't know. Um, there are two people on LinkedIn that work for Kill Links LLC. These are screenshots I took of them. Lillian Lantigua, who, if you hit contact info, you can get the Gmail address that she uses. I actually, if I don't get a favorable response, I will send her a personal email and ask her what gives. Um, because, and there's a reason for this, let me go to the other guy first. Chris Sabag, I don't know who he is. Hollywood, Florida, copyright analyst. Not much information is available here. Oh, look, he, he did copyright for Kill Links LLC full-time. Owner, Media Sabotage LLC, self-employed. I don't know if he did the same thing or what. I don't know what his relationship is to them. But before that, all he did was, like, hospitality. Hospitality. It's all hospitality. Uh, guys got a bunch of certs. Computer certs. Issued last year. Whatever. <clears throat> so this guy, you know, not much information. He's one of the two people. But Lily Ann here, I'm pretty sure Lily Ann is the engine behind some of this stuff. And here's why. Because experience, brand protection manager. Four years, seven months. And remember, the company, it, it was created in 2012, so it's about eight years old. Nearly nine, whatever. Maybe nine. Uh, but there you go. I'm the brand protection manager for the Coachella Valley Music and Arts Festival, Stagecoach Music Festival, and the band Tool. Well, gee, I wonder what band it was. I wonder what band I got a DMCA takedown notice for. Review and analyze web results using knowledge of intellectual property, online brand abuses, and customer-specific brand knowledge to select relevant records for customer review. You get the idea. I don't want to read all this. This is a self-starter. You know, this is just LinkedIn. Classic LinkedIn garbage that no one cares about. Um, yeah. She, she's the, she is the most likely person to be behind this. So, um, you can get her email here if you want to contact her. If you can't seem to get them to respond to any of your messages, um... And that's what I'm going to do if I don't hear anything back, because some people have reported never hearing back, never having anything done about their copyright strikes, and uh, I'm not going to sit down and take it lying down. So we have their real addresses, the real company name, two of the people who work there, the email address for one of the people who works there. I don't know if it's supposed to be personal, but it's a LinkedIn email address that she publicly posted. So, yeah. And all of this came from about an hour and a half of research that stemmed from a copyright strike that never should have been leveled on my video in the first place, and the video was arguably a fair use of copyrighted material. Um, but it, it's just dumb. You didn't have to do this, and there you go. I've laid bare your organization. 
And I hope that they will see the light and deal with this copyright thing the correct way. Because I am prepared to take further action if this strike does not go away. That'll be all. Thank you for listening. Everybody have a wonderful evening. Oh, look, OBS snuck up right there. That's kind of cute, isn't it? Um, I don't even know if anybody's watching. I, I haven't been paying attention to the stream counters or anything, and it's way late on the East Coast, so I wouldn't be surprised if nobody's actually seeing this. But I hope if you're watching this later, or if you're there and I don't know, that you have enjoyed this and that you found it educational. If you have received a copyright takedown from this company, send them a message and request respectfully that they take the strike off and offer to take your video down in exchange. That's the right thing to do. If they play hardball, you know, be careful. I'm not a lawyer. I can't give you legal advice, but I can give you some friendly advice, and that is... You don't want to go legal, but there's a lot you can do before anything ever goes to a court of law. So keep those options in your back pocket if they decide that they're going to nail you to a wall. Have a good night or morning. Always forget, people will watch this later. It could be like 8 a.m. Someone could be having tea and biscuits while I'm over here just uh, looking creepy in the single light coming from that direction. Take care. Good night. Be well. And don't tolerate copyright. Trolls are... I wanted to say trolls, didn't I? But they're not copyright trolls. That's the other thing. Huh, I actually meant to say that during the stream, you know? They're not copyright trolls because they're not. If these companies are legitimately hiring them to represent them for the purpose of finding and taking down material and they're not trying to get you to pay fake settlements in the DMCA takedown, they're not copyright trolls. So, yeah. Use the correct terminology. All right, I'm going to go to bed. Good night.